Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to play a sound in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from David in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, one of my Platinum members. David says, I have a very long report that I run every morning. It takes a good five to ten minutes. When it's finished, I'd love for the database to make some kind of a noise to let me know it's ready. I played around with the beep function and it works okay, but it's easy to miss one beep. If I try to get it to play like 10 times in a row, it still just sounds like one beep. Any ideas? Well, yes, David, I too have several reports and, and very long queries or series of things that I run from time to time. And when it's done, it's nice to have the system alert you in case you, you know, your, your attention somewhere else or whatever. Um, and yes, if you play with the beep function, which I'll show you in just a minute, if you stack them together, it doesn't matter. Without some kind of delay in there, it just sounds like one long beep. Let me show everyone else what we're talking about. Couple of prerequisites before we get started. If you've never done any VBA before, go watch my intro to VBA video. It's not scary. Everyone says, oh, I'm scared to learn a VBA. No, 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 I want macros. No, you just, it's okay, you'll be fine. Go watch my intro to VBA, it's absolutely free about 20 minutes long, it's on my website, it's on my YouTube channel, go watch it, you'll be, you'll be okay, it doesn't hurt. And then once you're done with that, go watch my video on four next loops. We're gonna use a little loop to play multiple beeps in a row. Instead of just typing in beep, 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 we'll do a little loop, okay? Okay, so here I am inside my Tech Help free template. This is a free download, you can go grab a copy of this off my website. Again, you'll find links down below the video in the description section. But let's pretend I've got some very long report that runs. It's got a bunch of queries and it has to crunch some numbers and do this and that. So I, I personally have reports that take about five, 10 minutes to run because it's pulling data across the network from my server too. So I'm gonna take this hello world button here. And if you've watched my intro to VBA, you know what this guy's all about. I'm just gonna make this, actually, we don't even need this guy here. I'm gonna delete, no, we'll just leave it there. But I'm gonna go inside the hello world button here. Let's change this guy to play a sound. Okay, right click, build event. That'll bring me right in here. Ignore all the rest of this stuff. Right down here is what I want. Now, if I just want to play one little beep, I can just type in beep. That's it, beep. Technically, the command is do command dot beep. But you don't really need the do command. You can just put beep in there. Save it. And then come out here. I'm going to reopen this form and then watch. Beep. It's whatever your default system Windows beep is. And that's something that you change at the Windows level. If you change your Windows sound themes, that will change. And you have no control over what the beep plays. It's just, a, it's just the default Windows beep. Now, if you try to stack them together, if you go beep, 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 I'll say I try to play four of them. All right, save that. If I click the button, it still just sounds like one beep. Why? Because Windows is basically playing those things at the same time. It just, one runs into the other one immediately. It doesn't play synchronously. It plays asynchronously. It, it, it doesn't wait for the previous one to finish. So it all sounds like they've stacked up one on top of the other. Okay? So if you want to get around that, you can use a little sleep timer. Okay? Where do you get a sleep timer from? Well, come right here on my website. Go to 599cd.com slash sleep. This will take you to my code vault, and this page is free for everybody. You'll see a sleep seconds right there. Some of the pages in the code vault are free. This is the only line you really need right there, that one line. All right, see that? If you're a gold member, you can go in here and copy that if you want to. Everybody else, you have to type that right off the screen. All right, but I'm going to copy that right there. Oh, get the whole thing. Public declare pointer safe sleep, that whole thing right there. That's all you need. All right, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come back over here to access, go to create, click on module, not a class module, regular module. All right, and then just paste that line in right there. There it is. Okay, now we're going to save this. You can call it whatever you want. I'll call it global. I like to have usually like one global module. And you'll see it right down over here. Now there's your global module. What's in there? Just that. But now you can use sleep. Sleep is basically a neat little function where you can say sleep and then give it a number of milliseconds. So 1000 is equal to one. Okay, so now let's go back over to the code in this button here, design view, right click, build event. Now I'm back in this form module and now I can say sleep 1000. 
All right, so it's going to play that beep and then sleep for a second. Doesn't seem like a lot, but it makes a big difference, right? And then we'll copy that, and then we'll paste it after that sleep, and then we'll paste it after that sleep. Okay, save it. Let's come back out here, close it, open it back up again. Which, by the way, I got a little button on my quick launch toolbar up here. You can just open up the main menu. All right, ready? Here we go. Play sound. Click. One, two, three, four. Sam, did you hear them all? So the sleep timer puts a nice little pause between the beeps so they don't all stack up on top of each other. Now, this isn't the best way to write this code. So let's get rid of that. Let's use a little loop. I said we're going to use a for next loop, right? So we're going to dim X as a long. Some variable X, I'm going to call it X. That's fine, right? It's a long integer, a number. You can, you can make it an integer if you want to, but I pretty much always stick with longs. All right? So for X equals one, two, however many beeps you want. Let's say five. And then in here, I'll say beep, and then sleep 1,000, and then next. And that's it. There's a nice little for loop. It'll loop five times. It'll beep and then sleep. Beep and sleep, beep and sleep, beep and sleep. <laughs> All right, ready? Here we go. Let's save it. Come back out here. Oh, and watch. Well, yeah, let's just do that. Here we go. I don't, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Ready? Here we go. Click. That's it. There you go. There's five beeps. Now, this thing here is the status box. And if you watched my video, my blank template video where I create this thing, I'll show you how to create a status function. Status just basically puts some stuff in the status box. We can come right here and say status, right? The count is X like that. And then when we run it, one, two, three, four, five. There you go, David. That's how you can put a little pause between your beeps and have as many of them as you want. Now, if you really want to play with the cool kids, you'll learn how to play an actual sound file in your database is that is something that I will cover in the extended cut for the members. So if you want to learn more in the extended cut for the members, I will teach you how to play an actual sound file, a WAV file in your Access VB. It's a little more code, not too much though. I'm sure some of you might've heard of this in some of my different uh, tech help videos because I have an hourly chime in my office that goes like this. Right, <laughs> it's a beam me up sound and that's how I know my database is doing stuff. Every hour that plays. So extended cut for members, silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. I'm pretty sure we're over 240 now. And gold members not only get the videos, but they can download these databases and they get access to the code vault. So they don't have to type, st type stuff in off the screen. <laughs> all right, here we go. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. 
You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all. One dollar. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by accesslearningzone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.